we're getting real about love, it is not always sunshine and rainbows and flowers like my suit. Sometimes it is messy and complicated, and it can be painful, something my next guest, author Matthew Frey, knows firsthand. When his nine-year marriage ended in a devastating divorce, he started to process what went wrong in a raw and unfiltered blog that quickly became a viral sensation. Now, with his new book, This Is How Your Marriage Ends, Matthew is on a mission to teach other people how to avoid divorce by laying bare the mistakes he made in his own relationship. Matthew joins us now from Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, Matthew, for joining us. <laughs> I know that you're a very private person, and to write this book was a, a big departure from how you really live your life. What made you decide, okay, I need to share this with people and forego my own privacy in the process? It started shortly after my divorce. I had sort of consumed more alcohol than I should have one night, and I called a, a phone a therapist. And I was talking to her and she found out that I was a writer by trade. And so she just suggested like journaling my feelings. And what ended up happening was because it was 2013, I, I blogged it instead of, you know, writing in like a private notebook like an adult would have. And it, it organically turned into something as people began to figure out that our relationship stories are not so dissimilar. Yeah, you know, in the book you wrote, I was 34 and crying more than an adult man probably should because my wife left and because I missed our little boy who was no longer home every day. I read that I almost burst into tears. I have to tell you, we know that divorce is painful. My parents divorced. I was, you know, a kid, and you go through life hoping that they'll reconcile one day. And we also know as adults now that I'm a grown woman, what it though means uh, from the adult perspective. But that really hit home because you just, you did lay it to bear, the pain that you were going through. It took that to be properly motivated, I think, to have sort of, I didn't need to be courageous to be as honest and raw mm -hmm. as I was in the writing because I couldn't feel worse. I didn't yeah. perceive myself to be able to do that. So I wasn't scared of judgment or the, anything like that at the time. The title of the book, This Is How Your Marriage Ends, it's, it's such a powerful title. It almost was so intimidating for me to even open it because it's just, this is how it ends. And that there are many ways that it ends. For you, what was that moment when you knew it was over? The well, I I didn't know it was over until I came home from work on April first, twenty thirteen, and my wife at the time was literally packing a suitcase mm. and informed me that said packing suitcase indicated she was moving out. But we spent eighteen years apart. Uh, excuse me, goodness. 18 months apart in separate bedrooms prior to that in what I would describe as a dead and miserable relationship. So it, I, I just didn't know yet. I was still holding on to like a dead thing for, for you know, a year or so before she finally decided to go. Obviously, when you enter a marriage or any relationship, no one is thinking that, okay, this is not going to work out. I think maybe in the back of your mind, you say, if it doesn't, what will I do? Had you ever processed, if it doesn't work, you know, we're 18 months living in separate bedrooms, what will I do? Had you ever processed that? You know, not during what I perceive like the regular marriage to be, like the, the how I remember marriage. But yeah, on some of those dark nights, I think, lying in bed alone in the guest room, I imagined I thought about that a little bit. But I honestly don't remember what any of those thoughts were like because it was all really imaginary. Mm -hmm. Not being married, felt so much worse than I'd imagined not being married to feel, wow. to be fair. You know, at least for 18 to 24 months afterward. Yeah. Well, you know, they say divorce sometimes is like you've lost um, a loved one. It's like a death in the family. When we come back, how do you move past that? A, if you're in the process of saving the relationship, and B, if it is time to move on to the next love. We'll have more with Matthew and his story. And a member of the Tan fam who's trying to jumpstart her marriage, why it could help your relationship too. We'll be right back. Today, we're talking to people who have shared their complicated love stories with us, and they found and fought for relationships in unorthodox ways. But our guest now is talking about when it ends and uh, even having the honest conversation about when it's worth saving. This is How Your Marriage Ends is written by Matthew Frey. What I love also about this title, it says a hopeful approach to saving 
relationship. So Matthew, you went through the divorce to only end up at the journey of helping people save marriages. I, I see behind you, I don't know if our audience can see it, there's a photo, I think, uh, of, of a wedding, and that, those are your grandparents. So it shows that That's you're right. still hopeful about love. Yes, absolutely. I, uh, I, I am, not, yeah, I, I think people accidentally harm their relationships. That's the premise of my work. There's an awful lot of decent people out there earnestly trying to make marriage work, trying to make love work. And I think so many of us fail to understand how some of the behaviors we do routinely in our blind spots, like the first couple at the beginning of the show, living together, they were accidentally like hurting one another. And now living apart, they're not accidentally hurting one another quite as often as they were before. And I believe that's the recipe for, you know, relationships to end. And so in my what coaching work and my most, writing, I'm trying to help people. What's the most common accidental way we harm our marriages or relationships? I think there's two ways specifically. The first way is we fail to consider, meaning we fail to calculate for how what we do or say will impact the person that we live with, the person mm -hmm. that we love. And I think the most common way is invalidation and conversation. Mm. Someone comes to us and says, I hurt. And if we don't think it makes sense for them to hurt, or if we don't feel exactly how they feel, then we tend to respond in ways that we might perceive to be disagreement, mm -hmm. but they experience as invalidation. Wow. That erodes trust, and that over time will end relationships. Well, we, when the uh, Tam fam heard that you were gonna be on the show, a lot of people reached out to us online with questions. One couple, Raymond and Julie, wanted your advice on how they could jumpstart their marriage. Here's their message. My husband and I have been married for six years in June. The first couple years of our marriage, we were really happy. We were working well together as a team. We both had equal share of household duties and chores. And everything was going great. Yeah, everything was new and exciting. We used to get dressed up, go out to dinner, clubs all the time. Still best friends, we still get along great, but it's just like the little things. He leaves the toilet seat up. Julie has acquired a lot of uh, belongings. The problem is she doesn't like to get rid of things. So we're constantly um, you know, stepping around her stuff. Yeah, I'm worried about these tiny things adding up into something bigger. We know we love each other. We really want to be together forever. So we just really want to know what can we do. Matthew, Matthew we, we need, need your, your help. help. Uh, so Matthew, you heard Raymond and Julie. It sounds like the little things build up and just the routine nature of every day wears on people. Yes, and what was interesting about that segment, I'm, I'm gonna, I would focus on Raymond and not on Julie, although I trust Julie to apply it to herself with like a well, hurting I'll take like care behavior. of Julie, because I'm gonna help her clean that closet. So you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Virgo, we're gonna go through a downsize. But tell me what your focus is for Raymond. I, I think Raymond, if he's anything like I was in my marriage, perceives this idea of like putting the toilet seat down to be such a minor inconsequential yeah. sort of behavior that she shouldn't feel upset by it, that he shouldn't be given grief about it. And I want him to reverse engineer it and not, I don't think Julie cares about the mechanics of putting the toilet seat down. I think Julie cares, values the notion of Raymond being mindful of how what he does and doesn't do, yeah. how that rolls downhill and impacts her. I want yeah. her to feel seen and loved yeah. and respected. And small things like dishes by the sink and laundry on the yeah. floor and toilet seats being in a certain position can absolutely communicate the degree to which we are considerate and mindful of other people. And wow. that truly is what was missing That's in my relationship. That's so true. Well, Matthew, thank you so much. I hope you come back as we explore relationships. A part of this show, I love that we talk about love, um, the, the entry of it, how to keep it going, and sometimes the exit um, that happens in a relationship. So congratulations on the book and the success that you've had helping other couples. And thank you, Julie and Raymond. That was awesome that you sent that into the show. Matthew's book, This Is How Your Marriage Ends, is out today. You can get it where books are sold. Everyone in the audience going home with a copy of this very, very poignant and open book about marriage. Thank you, Matthew.